Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace injectors and injector cups on a Volvo D13 engine. Um, to take off the valve cover, you can watch one of my previous videos on how to do that. Before we begin, there are some special tools you need that not everybody may be able to acquire. You may be able to rent them from a Volvo dealer or maybe a shop nearby that you have. So, these tools are somewhat expensive. We paid $1,700 for them. This tool here... Uh, to take out injector cups it just goes over the injector cup like that and spreads spreads out in there when you tighten this bolt and pulls it out uh, we never had a problem getting the cups out the next tool you need is this here this pin on top it comes off you put the injector cup on and you put the pin over it and the tip of the pen spreads out the injector cup once it's in the hole. You have to torque it down, torque down the cup while doing this with the with the injector hold down that are holding the injectors now. You may also be able to purchase this online, but I don't know how good they are online. They, if this breaks off inside your engine, you're pretty much screwed. Um, but I could show you this part number here see if you might be able to get that that's eight 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 zero zero three eight seven eight 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 zero zero four sixty this doesn't have a part number um, this goes over top of this here once once this piece is on there this goes over the top in here and that's pretty much it you also need some of this here to put into the injector cup right here when you put on the new cups and uh, let's see if this has a part number right there one one six one zero five nine you need uh, extreme pressure lube this goes over the the pen here so that it slides through the cup easier so it doesn't break off because then that'd be bad. Let's see if there's a part number on this. Um, I don't see one, but you can try getting one that's this brand. And you also need some of this graphite paste. Our injectors usually come with this, yours might too, and this goes onto the injector. And uh, that's pretty much it for the special tools, I believe. If there's anything else, I'll let you know in the video. Okay, you begin by draining your coolant. Most Volvos, probably 95% of the ones I've worked on, have a quick connect on the radiator underneath. I don't know if you can see that there. A little piece sticking out of the radiator. As, that's a cover over it. And you can use one of these to attach it. It makes it very easy to drain the coolant. This does have some kind of part number on it in case you're looking to get one. That's 999-6049. <clears throat> so you start draining the coolant. As you can see that's draining into these it can drain it into a big barrel if you have a pump to pour back in but I think this is much much easier to pour back in later you would want to take off the coolant cap for it to drain a little faster once your coolant is drained you can begin taking your rock arms and stuff out before you begin that though you want to cover up these holes back here with some kind of rag or something so nothing falls in there so your day can so your day can remain simple you also want something to put all your crap into if this is your first time maybe get some baggies and mark what you put in there so you know where they go i just use a box so everything doesn't go all over the place here okay you can start by taking this uh, engine brake valve off here it's a 12 two 12 millimeter bolts and uh, one wire down there and this is how this wire is held on by a zip tie to the valve there so you can just cut the zip tie okay. 
just pulls out of there. You would want to replace this. It looks like somebody did not put this in correctly before. So you'd want to replace this here and there's an o-ring underneath also that you might want to replace if it's old. Next you want to replace these here. I guess they're called engine brake rocker hold downs or something. Not sure. It's a six millimeter hex socket and it just on screws there. If I had two hands, I'd be taking these off with the other hand, but I only have one hand right now. So you can go ahead and take off. You can go ahead and take off the rest of these. There should be six of them. When you're taking off that very back one, I already took it off. Just be careful. Try to get the bolts off as soon as you unscrew them, because there is a lot of little spaces back there that they could fall into. It'd be difficult to get out. You can start unscrewing the rocker arms. There's an 18 millimeter bolt back here, and the rest here are all 13 millimeter. So you start from the outside. I already loosened that one by hand because I doubt this drill would be strong enough. Then you can start removing these 13 millimeter bolts. to replace my battery. Oh, looks like it's not coming out. Usually my drill is strong enough to take all these out. Maybe they over tighten this one. Okay. You can unscrew it. One of each of these. And then to play it safe, I usually unscrew these three a little bit at a time. Just because you don't want to break this long rocker arm until it comes down. Once you have all those unscrewed, you can go ahead and take all these bolts out and put them in your baggies or your box. Okay, your bolts are out. As you can see, these bolts here, there's a thread in this hole here and on this side also. So to make life a little easier, we made this tool out of an angle iron and two bolts. It has two holes screwed into it and it fits right on top of this screws into those threads and it makes taking out this rocker arm much easier. This tool is not required, you can probably do without it, but it's just much easier with it. And then you just snug up these 19 millimeter bolts that we have. Then you just push your rocker arms out of the way and watch out for these cylinders. Hold on. You just push this up. These cylinders do come out of the rockers. You just make sure to put them in the spot where that rocker was because they need to go back in the same rocker that they came out of. As you can see, I just pulled back my rocker arm and it sits perfectly on these uh, camshaft caps here. Pretty firm there. And you can just leave it like that for the rest of the job there. Next, you can start taking these off, putting them off to the side where, where you took them off because they need to go back in the same spot. Once you have the valve bridges off, you can start disconnecting your injectors. You just click this, push this down underneath and it'll pull right out. You can do the rest of them like that. You're now ready to take out your injectors. It takes a 14 millimeter socket. Just go ahead and loosen or remove, remove all the bolts holding the injector hold downs. The injector hold down does not come out with, until the injector is pulled out. So to pull out the injector, you just use a pry bar 
be careful not to mess it up. It goes right below the spring there. And you just push it up. See? And it's out. And you do that with the rest of your injectors. There might be a little bit of diesel in there, but it's okay. It's not too much. We'll use a vacuum later to pull it out, but it's not mandatory, I guess. Once you've pried loose all your injectors, you can begin taking them out. If you plan on, if you're just changing cups and you plan on reusing these injectors, you just want to mark them. For instance, this will be the first one, so one, two, three, so on. Put your numbers on the injectors and then take them out. If you're not, then you can just go ahead and pull them out and put them into your core box or wherever you're putting them. Once you've pulled out all your injectors, you can start taking out your cups. Make sure you have drained your coolant as we did previously in the video. So you start by getting this tool here. Again, the part number is on the tool. There it is for you. And you put it into whichever cup you're taking out. It just should just slide into it. Then you tighten up the bolt here, the nut. It's a 16 millimeter nut. You just slightly snug it up just a little bit, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it out later. Once that's in, put this over top. And then thread this onto the bolt under there. You can just thread just a little bit and then hold this while spinning that the rest of the way down. Now, put your 24 millimeter wrench on this and you just, you want to hold this with, a, with another wrench, the one half or 13 millimeter. You want to hold that while you're spinning this. Um, I won't be doing that now because I only have one hand. Still works the other way just fine. comes loose and then you can spin it by hand until it's loose enough to pull out. There you have it. You go ahead and do this with the other five. As you can see I pulled out all my injector cups and I'm assuming this one was the one that was bad. Uh, we're replacing all of them and all the injectors because we don't want to do this job again. <clears throat> Once you have all that out, you need to start cleaning out these holes. As you can see, it's very dirty down there. You need some brushes for that. I'll show you in a second here. Okay, so the brushes I use are this metal brush to help clean the silicone or um, sealer off the bottom of the uh, space there. And I also use this brush here to get the sides and this brush here to get into the little hole the, the, the injector cup slides into. Be careful not to break your brush on your cylinder, that would really suck. You want to do this until you have a shiny platform down there. So your injector cup has a good sealing surface. Okay, obviously the brush won't take the stuff away, it just strips it off. So you use a little bit of something. I use brake parts cleaner. Spray around there, see it's getting more shiny. And I'll show you what the finished product looks like. And once we're done with the cylinder, we need to, uh, it might not be necessary, but we, I have a vacuum that, you, that I put into the cylinder to pull out some of the extra fluid in there so the engine doesn't hydro lock.
clean up in there. I usually put this rag over my brush so it grabs it good. Try to clean it so it'll be at least this good, but usually better. Try not to scratch it up if you're using a metal brush also. You gotta watch out for that. And that's it for the first part of this video. In the next part I'll be showing you how to put in the cups, the injectors, and how to put your rocker arms back on. One more thing I forgot to mention. When you're cleaning this, once you're done, you want to have a shiny surface so you can see the shiny metal. And it needs to be perfectly dry down there because there's coolant that runs behind it. Once it come back in there, you want to clean that all out so you have a nice, clean, dry surface for your injector cups and their sealer that goes on them. In my next video, I'll be showing you guys how to put in the new injector cups. Ours comes with the new bolts and the new injectors, graphite face, O-rings, all that. It will be in the next video for you to see it soon.